Hello, good evening, Prerna and Shikha. Just confirm if I'm audible to both of you. Uh, yes, sir. Good evening, sir. Good evening. All right. So in the previous class, we have completed the formation of the capital account, the fix and the fluctuating capital method. And in the point of discussion for today's session will be calculation of interest on capital, right? Uh, just a minute. All right. So let's just quickly start with the calculation of interest in capital. So I'm I'm sure both of you already understood the meaning of the calculation of interest in capital. Like I don't think we need to explain it. Uh, we need to understand. Uh, uh, I, I don't have to explain it to you. What does the meaning of the interest in capital is? So let's just quickly start with the calculation part. Let's start with question number 32. So this question is regarding the calculation of interest in capital. We need to find out the interest on capital in this case. Question 32 says that there are two partners, Amit and Brahmit who have started business on 1st of April with a capital of rupees 50, 15 lakh and 9 lakh. So these, these, this is the opening capital balances of the partner. Opening capital balance of the partners are given. Opening capital balance is given in the question. Okay. Then on 1st of October 2020, they have decided that their capital should be rupees 12 lakh each. Okay, so from first October onward, they they are decide they have decided to change their capital. They have decided to maintain a capital balance of twelve lakh each, right? The necessary adjustment in the capital were made by introducing or withdrawing by check. Interest on capital is allowed at eight percent per annum. We need to compute interest on capital for the year ended thirty first of March. So the question is very simple. Question is just asking us to calculate the interest on capital. So whatever the balance that the partners have maintained over the period of time during the year, we just need to we just need to calculate interest on that capital. All right. I hope the question is clear to both of you. Right. Shall we start with the solution? Yes, both of yeah, okay. All right, so in order to calculate the interest on capital, first of all, you need to understand one thing. So, let's suppose this is the one year period. This indicate this is indicating a period of one year. So, question is saying that at the beginning of the year, at this point, at this point, their capital balances were their capital work for Amit and Brahmit, right? For Amit and Brahmit have a different capital balances, 15 lakh and 9 lakh. And Brahmit was maintaining a balance of 9 lakh. Now, one day on, on 1st of October, they have decided to maintain this equal capital balances. So on 1st of October, let's suppose this is 1st of October. Right. So from 1st of October, they have decided to maintain a balance of uh, 12 lakh each. So from this point onward, we can say from this point onward, from 1st October till 31st of March, both partners have maintained a capital balance of 12 lakh. Can we say that? Yes. You can say that because question is clearly indicating that both of them have decided to maintain a capital balance of 12 lakh each. So that means we need to, when we calculate the interest on capital, we have to calculate the interest on capital for this period separately, starting from 1st April till 1st of October. 
since the capital balance is balance made uh, maintained between this period is different right and the capital balance maintained during this period is different so we will have to do the calculation of interest in capital by dividing the entire year into two into two sections first section will be starting from 1st of april till 30 30th september right so from for first ap first april till 30th september how many months are there april may june july august september six months right so for six months the calculation of interest will be different and for the remaining six month period the starting from 1st of october till 31st of march the treatment of the interest in capital will be different for the six month period we will calculate the interest in capital by taking into consideration these capital balances and for the initial six month period we will calculate the interest in capital by taking these value into consideration right so let me show you how we will calculate the interest calculation of interest on capital first of all we will calculate the interest on in capital for amit for amit it will be firstly we will calculate interest on in capital on 15 lakh at 8% per annum right 8% but the interest will be charged for how many period for the period of only 6 month 8% for 6 month period so this will be written as into 6 upon 12 we will calculate 6 month interest on 15 lakh and then we will charge interest on the new capital balances they, the partners have decided to maintain that is 12 lakh into 8% on this amount for the 6 month period only right so once you calculate it you will get the value as the premium lag into 8% 8% of 15 lakh will be 1 lakh 20000 and this term yeah 1 lakh 20000 and into 6 by 2 12 that means 60000 for the first 6 month period and for the remaining 6 month period it will be 12 lakh into 8% that will be 96000 into 6 by 12 that means 48000 we will get 1 lakh Four thousand eight hundred. I'm sorry. What did everyone? Is the calculation for interest in capital for Amit is clear? Yes or no? Yes, sir. It's clear. Okay, now we will do the same cal similar calculation for Brahmit as well. So for Brahmit, it will be first of all we will calculate the interest on capital of rupees nine lakh into eight percent into six upon twelve, right? And then we will add twelve lakh. Into eight percent into six upon twelve. So when you will calculate it, you will get nine lakh into eight percent. That will be seventy two thousand. And dividing it by twelve, multiplying it by six, we will get thirty six thousand. And for this part, for the remaining six month period, you will get the same interest as Amit have got forty eight thousand. Totaling, totaling this. We will get thirty six thousand plus forty eight thousand. This will be eighty four thousand.
tell me everyone is this clear yes or no yes sir okay all right sometime question also requires you to pass the general entry in the questions relating to interest on capital question may ask you to pass the general entry as well so in this case whenever you will be required to pass the general entry let me show you how we will do the general entry of such kind of question general entry regarding the interest on capital right general entry regarding interest on capital will be done first of all we will pass the general entry for the for the interest due when interest is due we will pass a general entry when interest is due right and the general entry for making the interest due will be interest on capital account debit interest account interest sorry interest on capital account debit interest on capital account debit to partners capital account who are the partner amit and bravat were the partner no? amit <laughs> account to bravat account this will be the general entry and the value will be 84000 for bravat and it was 108000 for amit totaling it we will get One lakh ninety-two thousand. Got it? Is it? Is this clear? This is the general entry when the interest is actually due, right? And then we will pass a general entry for the uh, what do we call it? Transferring it to the profit and loss account, or you can also call it P&L appropriation account. so we have to do one more general entry when transferred to pnl appropriation account mm. right pnl appropriation account so the general entry at that time will be just a minute this will be profit and loss appropriation account will be debited by 192000 to interest on capital this is the general entry for transferring the interest on capital to the appropriate see interest on capital is a it is an it is a kind of loss or it is a kind of expense from the viewpoint of the firm so the any any kind of expense or a loss will be transferred to the uh will be transferred to the pnl appropriation account on the debit side right if you are able to recall the pnl appropriation you will remember that interest on capital need to be trans need to be transferred to the PNL appropriation account on the debit side. So the, that is what we are doing here. One lakh ninety two thousand on the debit side. Uh, sorry, to interest on capital account. I hope this point is clear. So this is the general entry for the interest on capital. First general entry for making it due, and second entry for transferring it to the PNL appropriation. I hope this is clear. All of you, just confirm if it is not. Otherwise, we move to the next question. Yes, sir, it's clear. It's clear. Sir, <laughs> please tell us the notation of both these. Want me to? Sorry, narration. Okay. Yes, narration. Sir, narration. So we will. So you can simply write it as for the four general entry. We will write uh, the uh, being interest. on capital 
due being interest on capital due oh, let me write it here being interest on capital d and second is for transferring it to the pnl appropriation so the uh, narration for this will be being interest on capital transferred to pnl appropriation being interest on capital transferred जैनब Yes, it is. Now moving on to question number थर्टी थ्री थर्टी थ्री से राम मोहन आर पार्टनर्स इन अजनेस देर कैपिटल एट दी एंड ऑफ दर एट दर वो रुपीज ट्वेंटी फोर थाउजेंड एंड एटीन थाउजेंड respectively during the year 2015-16 rams during the year 2015-16 rams drawing this is not drawing this is drawing and mohan's drawing were 4000 and 6000 respectively profit before charging interest on capital during the year were was 16000 calculate interest on capital at 5% per annum For the year ended thirty first of March. Now see, the thing is that in the question, capital balance of the partners that is given in the question is not the opening balance, right? And whenever opening balance is not given, we need to find out the opening balance because because interest capital is always calculated at the Opening balances of the partner, opening capital balance of the partner. Since the opening capital balance in this question is not given, so therefore we will have to first of all find the interest. Of, sorry, find out the opening capital balance of the partners, and then only we will be able to pass the. We will be we will be able to calculate the interest on capital. Do you understand that, everybody? Since in the question closing capital balance is given. and interest on capital is not calculated on the closing capital balance we need to find out the interest on capital only on uh, on the opening balance of the uh, capital balance maintained by the partner so for that purpose in order to determine the interest on capital we will have to determine the interest on capital first all right everyone yes we, we, we will have to find out the opening capital first to, to determine the interest on capital and let me show you we have to make a extra working note in this question to determine the opening capital balance of the partner first of all so first of all we will find out the opening capital of the partner right statement showing let me show you how opening capital of the partner is determined we'll prepare an extra working note this is all working note i'm doing statement showing calculation of opening capital so to determine the opening capital of the partner so we'll make a uh, some make a statement like this particulars and we have how many partners we have 
two partners, Ram and Mohan. So a column for Ram and a separate column for Mohan. Okay, so first of all, let's write down the opening capital balances of the partner. Not, not the opening, closing capital of the partner that is already given in the question. Closing capital of partner that was given in the question. See if you are able to see opening cap closing capital balances were 24,000 and 18,000 respectively. Right? So we'll write that value here 24,000 and 18,000. Right? And to determine the closing capital, what do we do? We, we uh, basically add the amount of drawing in it, add drawings. Drawings are added. And profits were sub profits are subtracted. Profits subtracted. And by doing this, you will be able to determine the opening capital balance of the partner. So whatever the value you will get by doing this, you will that will be considered as the opening capital balance. And on this on this amount, we will be able to determine the interest and capital. So let's just quickly look at the question and find out the value of the drawing. The drawing in the question were 4,000 and 6,000 respectively, right? So we'll write that value 4,000 and 6,000 here. And interest, oh sorry, the profit were also distributed among the partners. Profit uh, was how much? 16,000. And uh, since the question is silent about the PSR, profit sharing ratio is not given in the question. So can we presume that both the partners were equal partners? Can we presume that? Yes or no? Since the PSR is not given in the question, can we presume that both partners are equal partners? <laughs> Tell me quickly. Yes, sir. That means the profit of 16,000 must have been distributed among the partners in the equal ratio. So, that means earlier this profit must have been distributed in the ratio of 1 is to 1. So that means 8,000 must have been credited, credited to Ram account and 8,000 must have been credited to Mohan account as well. Now to determine the opening capital, we have to subtract it. Since we have to subtract it, I'll put our negative sign here. And since drawing have to be added, I'll ju I'm just adding a positive sign here. Now let's find out the opening capital balance 24,000 plus 4,000 will be 28,000 minus 8,000. So this, the opening capital for Ram will be 20,000. And for Mohan, it will be eight plus six, uh, 24, 24 minus eight. So this will be, I guess, 16,000. Right. Tell me if it is clear to everyone. Yes, sir, it's clear. It's clear. Now that we got the opening capital balance of the partner. Now we can calculate the interest on capital for the for both the partners as well. <laughs> interest on capital for First of all, for Ram, it will be 20,000 into what was the rate of interest? Rate of interest was 5%, right? So 5% of 20,000 will be 1,000. And for Mohan, it will be 16,000 into 5%, that means rupees 800. Tell me everyone, is this clear? Yes or no? Yes, sir. Done writing it. Anybody want me to scroll up or down? Any specific segment of the solution? Done, sir. Mm.
everyone else and up. So can you scroll a bit down? Then so. Down as in you want to show the cal you want me to show the calculation of the yeah, capital. The calculation. Or the yeah. Anybody please tell me the general entry of this question, please. The interest on in capital part. <laughs> We'll have to pass two general entries. The first is for the for making it due, and then for transferring it to the PNL appropriation. So the so the general entry for the interest due is PNL appropriation account debit to Ram Capital account, Mohan Capital account, one thousand eight hundred. That means eighteen hundred will be debited to PNL appropriation account, right? And then we will transfer it to the PNL account. And the general entry for that that will be sorry sorry sorry. The first general entry will be interest on capital account debit to Ram account Mohan account, and the second general entry will be PNL appropriation account debit to interest on capital account. Right, everyone? Yes. Is this clear? Okay. All right. So I'm I'm sure that you must have written this down. Okay, so next question. Question number 34. I'm giving you five minutes. Solve this question. Let me know the answer. Anybody want me to explain the question? See, let me let me explain it. There are two partners, long and short, right? Their calculation, sorry, their interest on capital is eight percent per annum. Balance sheet for the year is given. See, everything in the balance sheet is not relevant for us. The only the capital balance is given in the question is relevant. We have one twenty one lakh twenty thousand capital balance for long, and short capital balance is one lakh forty thousand. So the, see, this is the Closing capital balance of long and short because the balance sheet is prepared on the last working day of the of the year, right? So since this is the balance sheet is always prepared as on thirty first of March of a particular year, that means it is prepared at the end of the accounting year. So the item that contains that are contained in the balance sheet are all the last uh, the, the closing balances. It indicates the closing balances of all the items. Similarly, in the balance sheet, longs capital and the shorts capital account is a closing capital balance, right? And we need to find out the opening capital balance. Only then we will be able to uh, the uh, we will be able to calculate the interest on capital. So during the year, long withdrew forty thousand, short is withdrawing fifty thousand. Profit for the year is one lakh fifty thousand. Out of profit, one lakh was transferred to the general reserve. Tell me how. Oh, sorry, just just do the calculation. Let me know the interest on capital in this question. I'm giving you five six minutes. Take your time. Let me know the answer. Anybody have any doubt? They can ask me. <clears throat>
Done, everyone. Oh, yes, yeah, sir. Okay, Shifa. Other than Shifa, anyone is else is able to complete this? Prerna Zainab. Yes, sir. Okay. Could you please tell me the interest on capital? Prerna, could you please tell me the interest on capital in this question? So in the beginning, one lakh thirty-five thousand. One lakh thirty-five thousand. Yeah. The so opening capital balance. You are talking about the opening capital balance, na? Huh? You are talking about the opening capital balance of long. Is that right? Yes. And for short, it is. Tell me. How much did you get for opening capital balance for short? Is the interest on capital for long term is ten thousand eight hundred? Yeah, that is right. You did not calculated the interest on capital for short. <laughs> All right, never mind. Zainab, could you please tell me the answer? Yes, sir. Thirteen thousand two hundred. Thirteen thousand two hundred for yeah, okay. Short, short. That that's yeah, yeah, that's right. Short. Prerna, you got the answer. Yes, sir. All right. Okay. So let me show you the correct solution of it. If anybody is not yet able to complete it, they will be able to see the solution and match your answer. <laughs> This is the solution. Okay, moving to the next question, and this is the general nature of the question: interest on capital account debit to long capital, short capital, twenty-four thousand, ten thousand, eight hundred, and thirteen thousand two hundred. Then we will transfer the entire interest on capital to the PNL appropriation account, so twenty-four thousand to twenty-four thousand interest on PNL appropriation account debit to interest on capital. <laughs> Okay. Just a minute. We are skipping this question. This one is very easy, so I'm not. I'll, I'll be giving it this question as homework. All right. Just take the screenshot of this. You need to solve this question as homework. <clears throat> Just take the screenshot. Let me know whenever you are done. <clears throat> done. Done. All right, everybody. So let's start with a new topic. This is all about interest on capital. We did various question based on interest on in cap capital. That I think that is enough. That's sufficient uh, when we talk about interest on in interest on in capital. By doing all these kind of question, you will be you you have good idea about how interest on capital. Is. Next heading on your notebook. Guarantee soft profit will be passed. Ah.
guarantee of profit means one of the partner is guaranteed or given a surety that that partner will be given a certain amount of profit in the form irrespective of the situation let's suppose there are three partners x y and z suppose z is guaranteed about just z z z has been guaranteed a surety has been given to z guarantee has been given to z that irrespective of the situation z will receive 25000 from the firm as a profit all right so z has been guaranteed of getting a profit of 20 25000 so irrespective of the position of the firm whether firm generates sufficient amount of profit or not let's suppose firm firm generated 1 lakh then since z was guaranteed that he will be given 25000 of profit so he the, this much of profit will be transferred to z all right and if somehow the law, the firm did not able to generate sufficient amount of profit in that in that case the deficiency shall have to be borne by the poor person who who have given the guarantee like for example between uh, x and y uh, only x have given the guarantee to z that in respect of the profitability of the business we will i'll be giving you or or the firm will be giving you 25000 as the profit all right so if somehow firm is not able to manage maintain sufficient amount of profit and z is not able to get the uh uh guaranteed amount of profit then he will have to contribute it from his personal account he will be bearing the deficiency like for example let me let me help you make it more clear let's suppose x y and z they are all equal partners right and apart from being an equal partner z was also guaranteed that he will at least receive a profit of 40000 in the form at least a profit if if profit is more than 40000 that is well and okay that is better but if the profit is below 40000 then in such a situation such deficiency has to be borne by the person giving the partner who has given the guarantee let's suppose in this case z was guaranteed and the guarantee was given by x okay now see uh if somehow firm have managed to maintain somehow some, somehow firm have managed to maintain a profit of uh, assuming 150000 right firm profit is 120000 now this profit need to be distributed among the partners in the equal way so as i told you the all the partners are equal partners so when you will distribute this profit among all the partners in equal proportion everybody is going to get 50000 50000 Now you can see that he is getting paid for only forty thousand, but he is getting fifty fifty thousand as the part of profit, as the proportion of profit. So does it have any problem when he will get fifty thousand? You will say okay, that that's perfectly fine. That is perfectly fine for him because he was guaranteed for forty thousand. Instead, he is getting fifty thousand. Since firm is able to generate more amount of profit, so he have no problem in this situation. He is completely okay with this. but let's suppose firm have only the uh, firm firm have maintained a profit of 120000 right so when you will distribute it everybody is going to get 40000 each in this situation also if everybody is going to get 40000 in this situation also z is not going to have any problem since he is getting what he was promised he was promised for 40000 he is getting 40000 no problem no issues at all but let's suppose firm have managed to maintain only a profit of 90000 right and when you will distribute it 30000 30000 30 everybody is going to get how much 30000 now the problem arises now z is not happy at all at this point because he was guaranteed of a profit of 40000 he is getting 30000 that means there is a deficiency there is a deficiency of how much there is a deficiency of 10000 now the question arises who is going to bear this deficiency tell me who is going to bear this deficiency guys tell me who will be bearing this deficiency in the profit in the 
deficiency of profit in respect of Z. Who is going to deal this? Tell me, Shifa, Prerna, Zainab, anyone? All of you, what happened? You are able to understand it or not? Do I need to explain it one more time? Zainab, Prerna, Shifa. Guys, am I audible to all of you? If I am, yes, then please, please tell me who is going to bear the deficiency? Who is going to bear the loss of deficiency? Z should have got 40,000. Instead, he's just getting 30,000. So there is a deficiency in the profit of Z by 10,000. So who is going to bear this loss of 10,000? X or Y or both? Or no one? <laughs> both will be? Okay. No. At the very beginning of the example, I've told you that only X have given him the guarantee. X guaranteed Z that he will be maintaining 40,000. X have given the surety. So since X have given the guarantee, then only X will be bearing the loss of such deficiency. All right. If, if X and Y both have given the guarantee to Z collectively, then the loss has to be borne by the borne by both the partners collectively. Right? I hope this, this point is clear, everyone. Yes, sir. Everybody is this clear? Zena, Prerna. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. All right, then. So I'm showing you the definition of the guarantee of profit. I kindly note this down. Please note it in your notebook quickly. And then we will move to the question. Done, sir. Done, everyone. Yes, sir. Okay. okay. Now let's discuss a few questions based on it. Let's start with question number 36. In question 36, it says A and B are partners who are sharing profit in the ratio of 3 to 2. C was admitted. C was admitted for the one sixth share of profit with a minimum guaranteed amount of ten thousand. So C is entering for one sixth share of profit with a guarantee of ten thousand as well. At the close of the first year, first financial year, the firm have earned a profit of fifty four thousand. We need to find out the share of profit which A, B, and C will be get will be getting i hope the question is clear to everyone right <laughs> question is pretty simple tell me if it is clear or not everyone 
क्वेश्चन इज क्लियर यस और नो यस सर ओके नाउ सी इन दिस क्वेश्चन वी नीड टू फाइंड आउट दी प्रोपोर्शन ऑफ प्रॉफिट दैट एवरीबॉडी विल बी गेटिंग ठीक है सो जस्ट मिनट फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल लेट मी शो यू दी सॉल्यूशन ऑफ दिस Firstly, the net profit that is given in the question is fifty-four thousand. Is that right? This is the net profit given in the question, right? Right now. And out of this, we need to share one six, one six, one six of this profit need to be transferred to C, right? So one six of this will be one six of one fifty-four thousand is nine thousand. Is that right? Fifty-four thousand. Into one by six, this will be nine thousand, right? Mm -hmm. So by after subtracting the C share, what will be the remaining profit left? Remaining profit is forty-five thousand. Now this has to be shared between A and B. Is that correct? Total profit was fifty-four thousand. Out of which we will give one six to C, and remaining will be shared with the remaining partners A and B. Mm -hmm. And in what ratio we will be sharing this? What ratio we will be sharing it with the with A and B? Tell me. In the ratio of in the in the old ratio, that means three to two. In the ratio of three to two, so forty-five thousand will be transferred to A and B in their profit sharing ratio. Forty-five thousand into three by five, and forty-five thousand into two by five. So A will be getting twenty-seven thousand. And we will be getting eighteen thousand. Tell me, is this clear, everybody? Question. Sorry, solution till this point is clear. Yes or no? Yes, sir. Why? Why don't you? Are, why are you guys not responding to it? Prina, Jaina, Shweta. Just tell me, is this calculation clear? Yes or no? Do I need to do any more? Yes, sir. One more time. Yes, sir. Okay. Jaina, what about you? Yes, sir. It's clear. It's clear. Okay. Now see, the thing is that in the question, it was given that C was guaranteed of a profit of ten thousand, right? So, uh, since firm have only managed to maintain a profit of fifty four thousand, and when you will calculate one sixth of fifty four thousand, that comes at nine thousand only. The thing is that out of the fifty-four thousand profit, C is only receiving nine thousand. So that is there any deficiency in the profit of C comparing with the amount of guarantee? <sighs> Tell me, is there any deficiency in the profit of C? Yes or no? And if it is yes, then tell me the amount of deficiency. He was guaranteed of rupees ten thousand, but he only get nine thousand. That means there is a clear deficiency of one thousand, right? Guaranteed profit minus share of profit. This is how we will calculate the deficiency of profit, deficiency of C. So C's deficiency will be calculated as guaranteed profit that was ten thousand, but the share in profit that he actually get only nine thousand. So ten thousand minus nine thousand will be how much? One thousand, right? Is it clear, everybody? Yes, sir. Everybody, is it clear? Yes, sir. Zaina, is it clear? Sees the calculation of sees efficiency yes, is clear, yes or no? Okay. Now, then, then, uh, now the question arises: Who is going to bear this deficiency? Since in the question it is not written that. Who have given the guarantee, right? It is only written in the question that C was guaranteed of ten thousand. But the question is who who have given the guarantee to C. So whenever question is silent about the the partner who is giving the guarantee, we simply presume that both the partners or all the partners have collectively given the guarantee. So if all the partners have given the guarantee collectively, then the deficiency has to be borne by all the partners collectively. Right, so the deficiency of one thousand has to be borne by C as well as B. Sorry, A as well as B. 
तो सीज डेफिशिएंसी इन प्रॉफिट बॉन्ड बाय ए एंड बी इन देयर ओल्ड पीएसआर इन द रेशियो ऑफ ओल्ड पीएसआर दैट इज 3 इज टू 2 सो दिस हैज टू बी ट्रांसफर टू द लॉस हैज टू बी बॉन्ड बाय ए एज वेल एज बी ए विल बी बियरिंग इट इन द रेशियो ऑफ 3 बाय 5 एंड बी विल बी बियरिंग इट इन द प्रोपोर्शन ऑफ 2 बाय 5 Got it, and this is how we will show the calculation. One thousand into three by five, that will, that is six hundred, and for B it will be four hundred. Tell me if the calculation is clear, yes or no? Yes, sir, it's clear. Yes, sir, it's clear. Okay, so I want you to note this down quickly, starting from this. Please note this down quickly, and whenever you want me to move to the next slide, let me know. Done, sir. Done. All of you done. Yes, sir. Done, so, sir. what's the question number for this question? Sorry, question. What's the question number? Question number was thirty six. Okay. Thank you. Shall we move to the next slide? Yes, sir. Done. Okay. Done, everyone. Done. Yes, sir. Done. Okay. Can you take the screenshot of this question? Ah, uh, this is your homework, and I want you to try it and tell me the correct solution of this in the next class. Take the screenshot of question number thirty-seven. <clears throat> Tell me whenever you are done, so that I can move to the next slide. Done, sir. Done. Then question number question number thirty-eight is also your homework. Take the screenshot of this as well. Done. Done, everyone. And let me check if I can give you another question as well. Okay. Just if it is possible, just take the screenshot of question number thirty-nine. Just give it a try. Ah, uh, so the these three questions are your homework. Ah, uh, you will definitely face some problems solving these questions, but I just I still want you to try this question at least. I will be discussing this question with you in the next class as well. But I still want you to try this question. However, you will feel you will face some difficulty solving these question. But I still want you to try it. Okay. So this is it for today's class, guys. Thank you so much for your time, and we'll see you in the next class. Till then, take care. Goodbye. Thank, Thank you, sir. Sir. Okay. sir. Yeah. Can you send a recording of the last class I was absent? Uh, Shifa, for the recording, uh, you will have to talk to your counselor. I don't have the links available. You will have to get in touch with your counselor. They will be sharing with you. You okay, will get so. the video. Do you don't have to be worried about that. You will get the video. But the thing is that I don't have the links available. Okay, sir. So. Okay. Thank you, sir. 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 Thank you, s
only okay, giving reason to help you. Okay. Okay. Yes, sir, so what what all topics did you cover in the last session?